We have come into this house to gather in his name to worship him. We have gathered in this place to give God the highest praise for all the things he has done for us. How many are glad to be in the house of God?
Oh God, I have no father. God, we're thankful for this day. Thank you for life. We're thankful for health and risen portion of strength. And God, we just give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. Lord, for being you. For being the one that sits high with you The creator of this universe and everything that lies therein. And Father, we're thankful for your blessings, for your mercy that's renewed every morning. God, we ask your blessings and your intended blessings upon this ministry. Ask your blessings upon this praise team, we pray your intended blessings collectively and individually. Upon this different ministry, Lord, within the society. Thank you for the ministry, the table ministry, the deacons ministry, the music ministry. And Heavenly Father, we ask your blessings upon those. This community. But I'm not 100 percent physically, emotionally, mentally. We pray, Lord, that you continue to fight for prayer, that you fight for Jesus in you. Don't lose hope. Build us up what we need building up. And Lord, let us read our sins of jealousy. Hatred, animosity, things that are not become, not become, but let us enjoy the fruit of the Spirit. Pray that our fruit grows and continues to grow daily. And I will pray that your love shows through with all that we say and in everything that we do. Pray that we can have love one for another, Lord, that we have the hand that us to do. Let us do, Lord. To others, if we would help others to do it. And Lord, we ask your blessing and comfort on families, Lord, who have lost their lives. I should bless and comfort on my heart, brain, the family, and the ground. And the claim being the family, Lord. Others, Lord, within this community. Lord, your word says to be absent. Lives to be present with the Lord. Thank you for the home gone. Thank you for the life of legacy. The legacy of life is displayed right here in this world. Heavenly Father, we pray that our conversation should just be elevated and we continue to encourage one another. And Father, we pray and we ask your blessings, Lord, upon our local Lord. State our federal governments, Lord, things that are going on around this world. Well, all you do is in your word, and you always do this. And Lord, we know that everything is under your control. Rash your blessings, Lord. Comfort, Lord, upon those around the world, Lord, that are suffering from the effects of the world. And Lord, we know that. No one person is above you. Pray your hearts and minds will be trained and filled with compassion and love for one another. And all we ask your blessings upon services this day, this morning. Thank for all those that attend to have a mind, all of you. Get up this morning and prepare themselves for this worship service. Ask your blessings upon those who are watching and listening via electronics. Father, we pray that Lord, that they will put distractions away. That the minds of the minds will be judged unto what the word has for them on this day. And then Father, we Lord God, we ask your blessings upon the pastor. Thank you for the word that you have placed on in this spirit on this day. Continue to lead God in the record of all. I should bless you. Jesus, man.
could you continue to be in prayer for those you, um, that we know that are going through the death that has invaded the ranks here at our church? I uh, want to lift up uh, the Clinton family. And certainly we want to lift up the Brown family. Um, Brother Diane will be finalized here tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Uh, but we're going to do last strip for his mother, Sister Hargrave, and um, his brothers, so David and, and Sam. And we just pray for that entire family. The Lord will strengthen them in a mighty special way. Uh, Earthner knows no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. How many believe that this morning? <laughs> <laughs> there are many names that we lift up every week that we continue to ask God to uh, pray for them and strengthen them wherever they find themselves at. And we're just so happy that all of you are here today and we trust that, um, that everybody's holding on. Yes. And God's unchanging hand. On next Saturday at 10 o'clock, I uh, hope John Watkins has asked all the men that have been present uh, here to work on the cemetery, to go clean into the cemetery to kind of straighten up a little bit. That's next Saturday at 10 o'clock, if weather permitting or there's no other ch uh, schedule change. And all the men together here next Saturday at 10 o'clock for that, for that endeavor. We're thankful for the opportunity to be able to do what thus saith the Lord. There's a word for us this morning, and I want to share with us a couple of passages of scripture. First, if you don't mind turning to the gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter, the gifting verses 1 through 7. And then we'll move down to John 13 and look at passages 21 through 27. So John 12, verses 1 through 7. As we gravitate through the Lenten season. John chapter 12, verses 1 through 7. When you have it, say amen. amen. John 12. We find these words recorded. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here at dinner was given in, the, in, given in Jesus' honor. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint pure nard and expensive perfume, and she poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, because, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. I need you to move on to the 13th chapter. In the early part of the 13th chapter, Jesus uh, tells us to say, washes his disciples' feet, and he tells them that they need to follow the same example. Picking up with the 21st verse of this 13th chapter, we find these words recorded. After he had said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified. Very truly, I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. His disciples stared at one another at a loss to know which of them he meant. And one of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. And Simon Peter motioned to the disciple and said, Ask him which one he means. And leaning back against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in a dish. Then dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered him. Jesus told him, What you are about to do, do quickly. 
God's word for God's people. If I can talk to you for a few moments this morning from the subject, Lord, who is it? <laughs> Lord, who is it? After selection from the choir, we hear from God.
You know that when all of the disciples are listed, that all of those that are at the beginning are the closest ones to Jesus, right? And Judas' name is always mentioned last because of the distance and the, close, and the lack of closeness that he had with the Lord Jesus. And we come to understand that if you read your Bible, that Judas never referred to Jesus as Lord. You can read it and you'll never see what Judas ever calls Jesus Lord. The closest he comes to calling Jesus anything is Rabbi, which means that he recognizes the fact that Jesus is a great teacher, but never fully embraces the fact that he is the Messiah. The Bible tells us that Jesus was put in charge of the money bank. You know, sometimes folk tend to gravitate toward a, their own interest. And for whatever reason it was, whether the Bible says it was for self-gain, the, the Judas had, had gone on a reputation and if he needed a little bit, he would go in the bag and take it out. <laughs> you know how it is, a little bit for the Lord and a little bit for me. Sometimes people have that type of mentality. And my beloved, from what we see here unfolding as we move to the 13th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, is that Jesus just puts the question, just puts the, uh, the statement before his disciples. After he has done a great deal of talking and ministering to his disciples, he says, uh, he was very troubled in spirit and testified, very truly I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. And as he says this, his disciples stared at one another. And I lost to know which one of them he meant. One of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. And Simon Peter motioned to his disciple and said, Ask him which one he means. And leaning back against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? And we ourselves, this is a relevant question for us today. And even though we will not uh, betray Jesus in the manner that Judas did, whether you realize it or not, betrayal is still very real. All right. Because of the way we do things. Because of the way we conduct ourselves and carry ourselves. For Judas, uh, there was a lack of faith in Christ which led him to do what he wanted to do. He didn't believe Jesus was the Messiah. And matter of fact, first and foremost, when we look at ourselves and we put forth the same question, are there avenues in our own personal lives that we personally betray the Lord? And I start by letting somebody know that when your faith is in Christ, you subject yourself to anything. I mean, you have to be careful how you come to church. Because sometimes some folk who just hang out at the church can cause the most problems, can stir up the biggest messes, and create the most, uh, create more animosity and problems than you ever could imagine. So oftentimes people come, and they, and they come not because of their faith in the Lord, but they come for various other reasons. And when we see that happening, all types of things can play out in the lives of those who have no faith in the Lord. Jesus, uh, Judas came because he was uh, in charge of the money. And perhaps when he looked at all that Jesus was doing and all the possibilities that were before him, see, he considered two possibilities. First and foremost, he didn't believe he was the Messiah. But he, did, he also thought that if he was the Messiah, then it surely in his mind that he would overthrow the Roman government. And if he overthrew the rubber government, then there would be more opportunities to gain financially. Yeah. And see, my beloved, sometimes in life, when our priorities are in the wrong place, when our faith is not in Christ, we'll subject ourselves to anything. And that's why I said we have to be careful how we come into the Lord's house. We have to come with our minds focused on the Lord and our faith in Christ Jesus. Because if your faith is not in Christ Jesus and it's in other things, you and I are prone to do anything. It's a relevant question. Lord, who is it? It is a question that we must put before ourselves and look at our own lives and see how we measure up and see how we line up. What are we doing that, 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 that pleases God? And what are we doing that goes contrary to what the Lord would have us to do and what He would have us to be? All of us have cases where we 
restrained from the Lord. That we've done some things, that we've said some things, that we that, that our minds have taken us places and, and put thoughts in our in our thought processes that have not lined up with what God would have us to think or who He would have us to be. So there's a lack of faith in Christ that there's some folk who are just here for the uh, for what they can get rather than for serving the Lord. And it's a dangerous position in life. We're, we're, we're prone to do anything when our faith is not in Christ. We, we, we get our priorities wrong. When we're more concerned about property than about saving lives. When we're more concerned about doing things and deeds than we're about the soul salvation of those who come to the door. When we're more concerned about our stuff than God's promises. Because you have so folk. They're the only concerned about themselves. In other words, I come to church to get what I can get. And after that, nothing much means anything to me. You got some folks sometimes that are just hanging out and hanging around. And lo and behold, you just watch out. When you just hanging out and hanging around, something's going to jump off sooner or later. But I stop by and let somebody know that when you put your faith and trust in God, the Lord will open up to you and show you what you need to do in life. I'm dealing with some things right now. And I tell people, I don't understand how people stop fighting for what God gave you. Oh, God. God has given you something that ought to be worth you fighting for. Oh, Too many times people are laying down, laying to the side, and, and giving it over and, and say, I don't want to do it anymore. Oh. But, but in reality, if God gave you something in life, it ought to be worth you fighting for. Yeah. If the Lord blessed you, you ought to be able to tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord and, and share with somebody your story. It caused a whole lot of problems. People fussing in churches today because some folk have no faith in the Lord. Amen. I tell folk all the time, it's not about anything that bracket is doing, right. but it's all about the goodness of the Lord. Amen. And if we're going to take the steps that God wants us to take, we're going to have to have faith in Him. Amen. Huh. Because here's what happens when you don't have faith in Him. When you don't have faith in Him, the second point is that the Jews didn't have a relationship with Christ. That's why his name always comes at the end. When oh, you don't have a relationship, when you're out of fellowship with the Lord, you're in trouble. Ooh, yeah. I wish I had somebody praying with me. I want somebody to know today that no matter how saved you think you are, the thing that you need to realize is this, is that you can't put other things before the Lord. You can't put your singing before the Lord. You can't put your husband before the Lord. You can't put your preaching before the Lord. You can't put anything before you put Jesus Christ. Because I Wherever you find yourself at in life, God has something to show every individual. He had no relationship with Christ. All he was there was for a money bag. Uh, and what you notice here, what happened to him in, in, in the 12th chapter is that Jesus rebuked him. You know, some folk never get over rebuke. Uh, and when you allow stuff to, uh, to fester inside of you, he has a way of taking over. Yeah. Look at the 13th chapter. It says, when, when Jesus told him who it was, he says, it is the one in whom I will give this piece of bread. I want to have dipped it in the dish. Then dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon of Scary. And as soon as Judas took the bread, wow. Satan did oh, <laughs> See, when you allow things to fester in your heart, the Satan is waiting to enter. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? When you have unresolved issues that you don't take before the Lord, Satan wants to take control. When you don't forgive other folk, when you walk around mad all the time and upset because of something that somebody said to you, uh, uh, something they've done to you, but I stop out and let somebody know that when I come into the Lord's house, I get all of it off of me. I'm not worried about what you said to me yesterday. I'm not worried about how you look. Then you must not be consumed by yourself. There are a whole lot of folk that are consumed 
by themselves. But Judas, the devil, knew that he loved money. And he used it against him. And my love, I don't care who you are, but when you come to church so caught up in yourself, oh, it's just a volcano, a way to do love. When you come to church and the only thing you can see is what you have and who you are, and the only thing you're concerned about, you're not concerned about who you step on and who's going to hurt, but the only thing that matters to you is what you want. Oh, you hear people talk about my blessing. I want you to know you're not the only one with a blessing. If God blesses all of his children and have the faith to, to stand flat footed and tell somebody that I serve a God who is able to take care of you. Does anybody here you know what I'm talking about? When we look at life and all that we go through, we ought to be encouraged to know that we're not in this by ourselves. But we must not be so consumed by ourselves. Here's Judas who, 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 who was upset over the repeat. And he had this thing that festered in him, and he, and he had a greed and a, and a love for money, and, and the only thing he could see is what he wanted. After all, he had the money back. Uh, he, he, he had what he thought was control. And many a folk in the church go astray, thinking that they have the power. Watch out! Thinking that they are in charge and that they are in control. Just because they know maybe some things that other folk maybe don't know. Just because they've been given a measure of authority, don't let it go to your head because if you're not careful, the devil can use it against you. Just because you've been elevated to a certain status, you must never forget to give God praise and give Him glory. Now we get to the point, how do we ask the question, who is it? Well, take a look at your own life and ask Him, who is it? And I stop by to tell somebody that it's all of us. It's not just one, by, one person, but it's the preacher. Yes, it is. Oh, it's a deacon. Yes, it is. It's a trust group. It's every member. Who is it? It's all of us. Because we're prone to betray the Lord. And how do we betray him? We betray him when we get up in the morning and we fail to tell him thank you for waking us up this morning. We betray him when we go out on our way and we go out on our job and we fail to tell the Lord thank you for the job. I talk about it as somebody knows that if God has done anything for you, uh, you need to tell somebody about the Lord in your life and how he's working it out for you. If he's healed you, you ought to tell somebody, I know he's a healer. If he's a way maker, you ought to be able to tell somebody, I know he's a way maker. If he's a burden bearer, you ought to be able to tell somebody, I know he's a burden bearer. Has he brought anybody from a land a long way? Who is it, Lord? It's us. Turn our backs from time to time. 
the enemy. And he will treat our hearts. Take us down a pathway and a road away from God. So whether you realize it or not, all of us have the capacity to betray him. When we don't honor him, when we don't glorify him, when we don't give him praise, we're simply betraying him. Because we allow other things to become more important. But when I think about what he's done for me, I can't speak for anybody else. But when I think about where he's brought me from, I can't help but give him praise. Somebody here knows what I'm talking about. When you think about what you could have been, when you think about what you used to look like, when you think about the places you used to go when the Lord touched you and brought you from a mighty long way, how he cared somebody from the other thing of sin and called you to come in. Think about your addictions that the Lord brought you through and brought you out of. And you can tell somebody about what God has done for you. How he brought you from the money long way. Oh, we ought to have a testimony. Somebody here today, you've been sick. The diagnosis wasn't good, but the Lord healed you. What? And you're here right now. Somebody has a testimony about what the Lord has done for you.
to say to you that this is a time of self-examination. That we examine our hearts. Every child of God must examine their own heart. Because what we're about to do today, we want to be pleased in the Lord's eyesight. Jesus said to do this as often as we would in remembrance of him. The bread which represents his broken body. The cup which represents his blood which was shed on Calvary. We do it all in remembrance of him. Let us pray. Father, we come out of obedience. And doing what you've asked us to do. Well, you said as often as we would do it in remembrance of you. But Lord, we also come asking you to look at every individual heart. Father, if we've got any hopes against our brothers and sisters, Lord, we confess it before you now. Because what we're about to do, Lord, we want to be pleasing in your sight. Now, Lord, bless what we're about to partake of. For these are all the blessings we ask and we pray in Jesus' name. Has anyone been omitted of the bread of the cup? Yeah. 
may the rest of you will abide with each of us henceforth and forevermore. So